Vlog Theater. ただいまより音楽劇「ロミオとジュリエット」を始めます。はじめに人物紹介をはじめます。Here is Juliet and here is Romeo.This is Father Lawrence.Here is the Prince.These are Juliet's mother and father.And here is Romeo's mother and father. Over here there is angry Tybalt, and here is Juliet's nurse. Here is Mercutio, and this is Benvolio. ありがとうございました。開演となります。では、プロローグです。お楽しみください。わー Two households both alike in dignity in fair Verona where we lay our scene from ancient grudge break to new mutiny where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes a pair of star crossed lovers take their life whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death marked love And the continuance of their parents' rage, which, but their children's end, naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. That is all one. I will show myself a tyrant when I have fought with the men. I will be cruel with the maids. I will cut off their heads. The heads of the maids? Aye, the heads of the maids or their maidens' heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. Thou must take it in the sense that feel it. Me, they shall feel while I am able to stand. And tis known that I am a pretty piece of flesh. Tis well thou art not fish. If thou hast been poor John, draw thy tool. Here comes two of the house of the Montagues. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. No, marry, I fear thee.、Uh, let us not take the law of our sides. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by. Let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir?、Uh, is the law on our side if I say I? No. Hmm.、Uh, hmm. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir?、Uh, quarrel, sir? No, sir. But if I do, sir,、uh, I serve as good a man as you. No, better. Well, sir. Blah! Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Part, fools, put up your swords. You know not what you do. Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio, and look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it with me to part these men. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word. As I hate hell, all Montagues and thee. Have at thee. Partisan strike! Beat them down. down with the Capulets! Down with the Montagues! What noise is this? Give me my long sword, ho! A crutch! A crutch! Why do you call for a sword? My sword, I say! Old Montague is come and flourish his blade in fright of me! Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbour stained steel! Will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beasts that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins! On pain of torture, from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground! Hear the sentence of your moved prince! Three civil brawls bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield the old partisans in hands as old, cankered with peace, to part your cankered hate. 
If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest, depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me, and Montague, come you this afternoon to know our farther pleasure in this case, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. <laughs> oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where, underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooted from this city's side, so early walking did I see your son. Toward him I made, but he was ware of me, and stole into the covert of the wood. I, measuring his affections by my own, which then most sought where most might not be found, being one too many with my weary self, pursued my humour, not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears uh, augmenting the fresh morning's dew. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can See where he comes, so please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new strap nine. Ay me, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours, not having that which makes them so short? In love? Out of love? Out of her favour where I am in love? Younger than she are happy mother's maid. <laughs> and too soon marred. But woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and she agreed within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love, and you among the store. One more, most welcome, makes my number more. My poor house, look to behold this night. Go, sirrah, trudge about through fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there. Hmm? And to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, and the tailor with his last, the fisher with his pencil, and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are here writ, and can never find what names the writing person of the here writ. I must go to the learned, in good time. <laughs>